yet. We're pressed for time, so we would like to have people who have seen something valid about justification as one in their heart, justified by faith, you know, to share your thoughts with us. When, uh, when you do share, we're going to ask you to step by this microphone right here. Please don't uh, be hesitant to do this because we're recording this. So there will be, as you must understand, a lot of people that are not accustomed to having the freedom to talk about a subject like justification by faith will benefit from your comments. So if you need courage, start getting prayed up now because uh, we're going to ask you to, to step to that. But uh, let's have a word of prayer and ask the Lord to put on our minds here and give us abilities of expression. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to speak and express ourselves about the great salvation in Christ Jesus that you have given us speech and a mouth. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now let's uh, get our bearings for this discussion uh, first of all. Of course, the fact of the case is that the Word of God says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not trying to establish if we're justified by faith. That's, that's a given already. And it's twice it's stated in Scripture that a man, man, I was interested in that because that's the classification I am. Man is justified by faith. And then there are a number of other expressions about how the deeds of the law. So, so uh, what we want to do now is to try and clarify that for people. Now, to, to demonstrate to you something you all know already, but this is just a, sort of a warm-up exercise. The word justified, I'm going to ask that uh, just from the audience that you speak this out kind of loud, I'll repeat it. To give a single word, not a phrase, not an explanation, it's a one word that comes to your mind when you hear justified. I'll give you one to start it. Accept. Vindicated. Vindicated. Exonerated. Exonerated. Free. Done. Freed. Free. Ennobled. Accepted. Ennobled. Ennobled. Else. Illuminated. Forgiven. Remission. Redeemed. Redeemed. Reconciled. Now we won't go any further. That took about 15 seconds. It probably have taken you longer than 15 seconds just to think of those two words. Which demonstrates the value of joint fellowship. As we all are responsive to the head, the nourishment is ministered from the head to the joints and veins. So that's what we want to do is uh, minister the joints and veins. Justify. Now, faith. What about that one? Let's have a few. Single word, not a single word. In the value of kingdom thought is you can express great bodies of reality into a short expression. Persuasion. Persuasion. Trust. Trust. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Conviction. Confidence. Confidence. Evidence. Evidence. Reliance, Reliance upon. Reliance upon. Hope. Well, that, that sort of gets the appetite's way. We're on a, our feet's been set in an exceeding large room, to borrow a phrase from the Psalms. I didn't used to be able to say that, but I can now, I'm sure. I was most impressed by the songs of the number, not the watches. Well, justification by faith. We're justified by faith. Now, what we'd like you to share with us is what that means to you. What does that, uh, what type of thoughts do that raise in your mind? We're not trying to really right, wrong, that's not the thing we're looking at now. What does this stimulate? in your mind. Or if it doesn't stimulate anything, step up for the recording and say this doesn't stimulate anything in my mind. It really is. Who's going to be another voice? Another voice spoken. The uh, 
Jewish system brought about a remembrance of sin and a constant recognition of guilt. If a Jewish person personally did not sin all day long, there was ever the possibility that the high priest would sin and bring guilt upon the people. The Leviticus 4 5 said that could happen. So there was this constant frustration that no matter how hard they tried, there they were always guilty. However, there was one day in the year which I believe the devout Jew had more freedom, more assurance, more faith, more confidence than any other time. That was the Day of Atonement. The Day of the Covenant. The Yom Kippur of the Hebrew religious experience. And on that day, they could have the confidence that they were right with God because throughout the long day, the high priest was ministering on their behalf. He was in the presence of God symbolically in the holy place, going back and forth through the faith, ministering for himself and for the errors of the people. Well, it is a tremendous encouragement to me to realize that at this moment, our great night is in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. On our behalf. Jesus Christ is the propitiation of heaven for us. Amen. 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 Quickly now, who will be next to elucidate on this subject? Any of our brothers and sisters? We've all heard uh, over and over again that uh, God has justified us. Uh, this is a given situation. This is something that God has accomplished and something that we should accept. And we do. But uh, how are we going to uh, find uh, peace? How are we going to find confidence? How are we going to find assurance and joy and hope uh, when uh, we see how flawed our lives are? Uh, we recognize, uh, like no one else, uh, some of you have a much higher opinion of me than I have of myself. Uh, some of you have a much higher opinion of me than my wife would have of me, uh, because she knows me better than you. And of course, I know myself even better than my wife does. And so, where is the peace? Being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you left that pretty well. Um, our confidence is in Him and ourselves. Our assurance is in Him. And if we are in Him and we trust uh, His ministering in the holy place on our behalf, then we can have a constant assurance, constant happiness, constant upbeat attitude uh, toward ourselves and toward uh, our daily conduct. This is a great assurance to me to put into the nitty-gritty of daily living uh, the matter of justification. Justification by faith, I have, I have wondered in times past just why God gave his justification upon faith. Why not something else? Why not uh, from the words that result from faith? Or why not from repentance? Or from baptism or, you know, or something else? And uh, it seems that Paul in the third chapter of Romans he deals with this matter. Because uh, the Jews uh, had this very idea that I'm expressing here that justification would be upon works upon the merit of their good uh, uh, good living, so to speak. But Paul deals with it in the wrong third chapter, and in so doing, he goes down to both things that were only come with this kind of uh, justification. Of course, uh, this is the kind of justification that uh, they rejected. That is, they rejected the justification that comes from God and sought to instill their own, and this is why they were in a state of unrighteousness. But Paul, uh, he puts down the boasting in the uh, first part of Roman. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to have my ear problem again. 
And uh, you remember in the first uh, chapter, and the first and the second chapter, he deals with the Gentiles and the state of unrighteousness because of their sin. Then he turns to the Jews and tells them that they're no better off because they too were guilty of sin because they were sinners under the law, just as the Gentiles were sinners without the law. But the Jews had this idea that they could vote because they were the children of God, or they were God's chosen people. But Paul puts them in their place, and he says, they don't have any cause to vote to you. Let me read some from the, from the third chapter. <coughs> Where then is voting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Now I think he's getting to the very point of me. I started out with why did God teach justification on faith? Because there is no human achievement in faith. We didn't do a thing in the world to get it. Therefore, we have no cause whatever to boast because we didn't do anything. It is a gift of God just like salvation itself. Therefore, man has no cause to boast because it was something that was given to him. Therefore, God has changed salvation on faith. Remember our father Abraham? We follow in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, who's the father of us all. We would be hard, pre hard pressed to think of any great achievement of Abraham. Other than perhaps battling the kings of Sodom and the river Lot, but apart from that, <laughs> there isn't anything you can post it, and that's, that's the whole point. Is that the, his persuasion that God was able to do what he promised, laying over the righteousness of God? Well, what are some of you other, you know, well, other Roy? Just following up there in the fourth chapter of Romans, in the 16th verse, he says, Therefore, the promise comes by faith that it may be by grace. So why is it faith? In order that it may be by grace. We all, Paul is speaking here, we're justified by faith, we're justified by faith, Abraham's justified by faith. But he wants to get really technical. He says, by grace through faith. So that there's no misunderstanding and confusing the ground with the instrument. The by, and he says, by faith is, is the instrumentality, not the cause. Otherwise, the cause is the right hand on us. And there is ground to follow at least those from the faith. Amen. 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 Now the, we're told, and this is this is true. God is a God of truth. He doesn't speak in hyperbole and all of this as much as people think. Because faith can't be built on a hyperbole. It's got to be found on reality. It says, He bore our sins in his body on the tree. God was the question. When Jesus came out of the grave, was his sins in that body? Obviously not. And he is without sin, which means that the deed, the deeds, have actually been removed. Yes, our transgressions that's removed. What is that? As far from us as he says from the works. I would say that uh, no, no man can be justified in his deed. The deed can't be justified, but the deed has been separated from the person. Right. I think that in responding to this kind of situation, we must come to understand that living in the flesh that even though we find forgiveness in Jesus Christ that oftentimes there are still consequences to our transgressions in this life that we still suffer. That's right. But with the coming of Jesus Christ Daniel said that he would put an end to sin and it is in Jesus that God put an end to our transgressions. He made atonement for our wickedness. And that is the beauty, in my judgment, of justification by faith.
because we can stand in a right relationship with God and our sins are washed away in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Uh, and briefly, I, I merely want to describe two sets of words that are closely associated in all of our studies. Those are law works and grace of faith. Law and works are correlative terms. Grace and faith are correlative terms. Correlative terms are terms so closely associated that when the one is mentioned, the other is brought to mind and compliant. And if you'll notice Paul, as he writes, he is switching back and forth in the same context between the law, sometimes it says law, sometimes it says words. Or he's switching back and forth between faith and grace, the same context. But he's not changing subject, that's all. But just using correlative terms so intimately associated in the thought that the one brings to mind the other. Also, in these correlative terms, law was from the divine side, works from the human, grace from the divine, faith in the human. And so you have this uh, interrelationship between the divine and the human in the use of both pairs. And it's just like in this, uh, these studies, I noticed that on, in some of our studies we speak of justification by grace and other of justification by faith. Of course, it's really almost the same subject. But we might wonder why that uh, we speak of justification by law, sometimes justification by works, justification by grace, sometimes justification by faith. It's merely because of the correlative terms. Yeah. An illustration that helped me to come to grips with this would be the Ark of the Covenant. And the Lord promised he would meet with his people over and above the mercy seat between the outstretched wings of the chariot. That was God's perspective. As he looked down toward the law, symbolized by the chariot and with their faces turned inward, he did not see the law. Instead, he saw a covering. And the Bible says Jesus is that covering for us. He is our he's a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now, those of us who are in Christ are not above the mercy seat. We're below. We are under Christ. So we look around and see one another. We read in the Bible about the church being without spot or rank or any such thing. And we say, man, that's not our church. You should have been at the board meeting last Sunday. Well, that's not our church. You should have seen what happened on the doorstep, you know. Uh, because we see one another. And it's impossible for us to have God's perspective. He says, I'm from above. You're from beneath. You can't see things exactly as I do. So when God looks down at even our church, with all of its laziness and indifference, he does not see laziness and indifference. He sees Jesus. And Romans 4, 8 offers this promise. The reason why we are happy or blessed is that we abide in a state where we do not give account for our sin. We commit them, but we don't give account for them. Amen. Amen. I, I was just going to comment in terms of Brother Earl's question, does this apply in the larger life? And I think we've said yes, very definitely. In fact, it's, it's all our deeds that are wrong, that are nailed to the cross, and from which we're, we're separated. Yes, we are justified not by those acts, but despite those acts, by the sacrifice of of Jesus Christ. The question becomes, can I then really accept that and find peace? Can I find myself distance from this action of mine? And that answer, as I understand it, is also yes. We say you can't change the past. True 
in part. You can't change the fact of what happened in the past, but how does the past exist now in the present in terms of its meaning, in terms of its significance? Or can that be changed? Absolutely. It can be changed. So what does my sin do? Remember, even though I'm forgiven and know that I'm forgiven, Paul remembered he had persecuted the church. It served to keep him humble before God. It can serve God's purpose by my remembering, even though I also must remember it's not my need now. Christ took it and praised his name. I am forgiven. Amen. 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 For 16 and a half years, well, I lived in the Jewish community in St. Louis, just literally across the street from the largest Jewish temple in the whole Midwest with more than 3,000 members. So we watched what they did, as well as having read and had the ideas from other sources. The thing which binds the Jewish people together more than any other one thing is they identify with their past. Every year at their feast, but particularly at the season, the, the Passover, they retell the story. They do not say our fathers, but we were bond slaves. We were there. We experienced the sufferings, the afflictions. We experienced the enslavements. We experienced the deliverance. We Christians. I suspect that many times do not have that depth of identification with our past. We do not see that we were there at the cross. We were there saying, let him be crucified. And we were there in him, if we will have it to be so, this is what faith to me is. I had it to be true. I was there being nailed to the cross in him. I died with Christ. And I rose with him. My sin has been judged. It has been condemned. It has been punished. And I am now free Amen. and alone. Amen. 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 Well, the, the Holy Spirit speaks of the circumcision of Christ. That he circumcised the body of the sins of the flesh. The whole mass of sin was actually segregated from humanity. Now, this is God's view. He was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. He didn't get rid of the fact that they were, well, I'm not even sure that's the correct expression, but he didn't get rid of the fact they were committed. That the fact that they were committed is not the issue at this point. It's the effect of sin that's the issue. See, sin alienates men from God, and that's the issue. And that was addressed in Christ Jesus. But they are. Precepts and laws and 
and commandments and judgments. Keep them all. But what God has done, and this is the point that Paul is making in the first few chapters of the book of Hebrews, he's taken those, that same conditionality and he's lifted up out of the realm of law and he's put it in the realm of faith. See now, uh, so now conditionality is, uh, is totally in the realm of a legal testimony. See, and it's, we're, we're justified by faith. We're, we're accepted of God solely on the base, basis of the belief of, his, of the record that God has given of his son. See, and this, this is a blessed thing and we really need to major, major on it. See, if, if, we're, if we're justified by faith, then the only thing that we condemn, be condemned by is unbelief. See, now that, that may seem like a, like a, uh, like a, a small thought, but you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of thinking out there that, you know, well, you can be, you can be condemned by, uh, you know, this little thing, and because you didn't attend the board meeting and things like that, or you didn't, you know, pay all your tithes, but, but that's the way the record is set. If we're justified by faith, then the only thing that condemn us, can condemn us is unbelief. Unbelief, the record. Amen. As the sin, the Spirit will convince us of it all. Of sin because we believe God in me. What is that? It's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, in my recollection of being justified by faith, uh, we need to identify what our faith is. Faith is objectionary in, in nature, not that we object to it, but it has to have an object, that being Christ. Therefore, we need now to be just in Christ. And some of the brethren have mentioned that. Uh, I look at it a different way. Uh, and maybe to, to add to, let's just jot some things down as some of you brethren were speaking. But I am sure of my salvation. And justification enhances that realization of salvation. And so, uh, some thoughts of what justification brings. For instance, justification by us being in right relationship with, for, and in God uh, brings number one fellowship with God. We're in fellowship with Him. Even as David said in the 139th Psalm, that even if he had to stop the fellowship that we have, not some whimsical thing, uh, therefore we become sensitive to God and for what he has done. Thus we uh, grow in grace and knowledge that uh, Peter in encouraged us uh, to do. Uh, we have peace in totality when, when we are justified by faith. We know, as Brother Alan mentioned, we know that the record uh, bears it uh, out and the accounts that were given unto us. Uh, we have a blessedness as a result of justification. Jesus said, blessed are those who are not found to be offended in me. See? So this comes from uh, justification. We have a victorious nation. As you mentioned last night out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, says so where we, we are continually victorious in Christ. And this again comes, uh, just a couple more, I'm going to ask that. One that I like a lot is that we have an anointing. And this comes from <coughs> being justified. Uh, we have an anointing or a holy option if you want us to read the, the authorized version there. But I like, I like the anointing better. The, uh, it just kind of uh, says it a little better for my taste. Uh, but nonetheless, we have an anointing from the Holy One. And uh, we need no man to teach us. And this is how we abide in Christ, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And those of us that are justified have this. Uh, <coughs> also, uh, uh, another important aspect is that we see things by faith. And we have the full assurance of faith. Uh, and with those two, uh, they relate to one another very well. Because we can see these things, thus we see these things, and we want more of them. Therefore, we uh, find every, which way we see every opportunity that we have to spur one another in this way. Uh, makes mindful of uh, the uh, 
sometimes as a prohibition we use out of uh, Hebrews 10 and 25, much to our chagrin, rather than using it as a, a prohibition, maybe we should use it as an admonition, one uh, for the other, uh, because we should want these things because we have been justified. Uh, and I can identify what Brother Keith said as well. We personally have been nailed with Christ. And so a uh, point, this is not, uh, this next point is not original to me, but it is worth bearing uh, repetition. Uh, we were talking about the incarnation of Christ. If we be in Christ, Christ be in us. And so this is another thing that has come from justification, that we are in Christ, therefore Christ being in the world, and we be uh, his ambassadors. I wrote several dozen things down there. I hope, uh, thank you very much for the uh, uh, exhortations and the encouragement, because this is the kind of things that the kingdom of God is about. You say something that as far as another brother spot, and it just grows and grows for the mutual application of the body. And my prayer is, brethren, that uh, we continue in this faith that the body of Christ may be deemed pure, spotless, and unblameable in the day of the Lord. Because no one, we can stand in that great and terrible day, as Joel said, by ourselves. But as Brother uh, Boyce said, we do need to cover it when we have that. Jim? Invite your sisters to the Lord. Drive to save ladies. <laughs> I, I'm blessed by the consistency of God and, and his foreknowledge. This is just a little bit different, but all this discussion has uh, given some thoughts in my mind to 